AI technology can assist designers by automating tasks, providing inspiration and analysis. It is not a replacement for human creativity and expertise, but rather a helpful tool to enhance work and improve our efficiency. Embracing AI as a design assistant is definitely the way forward as it will only continue to improve and enhance our design processes. So what exactly are we going to cover in this video? Well, we're going to take a look at using a range of different AI tools to assist us in the whole design prototyping stage. Now, this isn't something that I would recommend that you use as a one and done finished. This is something to get your inspiration flowing, to provide design ideas to clients, those kinds of things. So we're going to be using a range of different tools. To start off with, we want to create a hero section, and that's what this video is all about. We want this to be for some pretty cool new trainers or sneakers if you're in the US, and we just don't have any artwork or any images or any kind of content. So let's use AI to generate all of that. So first off the bat, we're going to be using Midjourney. Now, you probably have heard of Midjourney before. You may have even dabbled with it. But is it any good? Can you use it for the way you want? Yes, you can with some caveats. And we'll take a look at those caveats as we go through. But as you can see, I've already gone ahead, generated a few different examples for various different things. Some of these are good. Some of these are pretty strange. Now, if you've never used Midjourney and you'd like me to do a dedicated video on how to use it, how to get started, and how to do some more creative things with it, let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll take a look at creating something if enough people are interested. This is my kind of gallery. Let's ignore that. Let's go over into the Discord server, which is where you actually start working with Midjourney. And let's get this to start creating some design ideas for us. Now we can get as creative as we want. We can actually get this to start creating designs for full web pages. But this example, I want to keep it really simple. I just want the image of this trainer or sneaker. So what we need to do is use the imagine prompt. So we're going to put that in. We'll press space and you can see now it tells us what prompt do we want to use. Now the prompt is basically the terms, the terminology we want to use to create the actual design or at least get the ball rolling. So for this example, I'm going to use wallpaper because I want this to be a wallpaper without any additional sort of image bits and pieces that we don't actually need. And that's all it's going to do. It's going to kind of create a more simple end result. We want this to be sneakers, white background. And we're going to tell this we wanted to use the version four of the actual prompt itself. To do that, we just put in dash dash v space four. So this is where we're starting off with. So now if we hit the return or enter, that's now going to go ahead and start working on that in the background. Now this can take anywhere from a few moments up to a few minutes, depending upon how busy the server is, whether you're using a free account, a paid account, those kinds of things. If you want me to cover this in more detail, including how to set up your own server in Midjourney, let me know down below and I'll take a look at creating that video for you. But as you can see, after a few moments, we start to get some ideas. And as you can see, we've got a range of different kinds of shoes. We've got these sort of like cons kind of thing, Nike trainers and so on. We've got these, these paint splashes, all looking pretty cool. Now, let's just say I like that, but I want to go a bit further. I want to change this a little bit. Let's copy that prompt. Let's do the imagine one more time. We'll paste our prompt in, we'll remove sneakers and we'll put running shoes in. Kind of keep it more in keeping with the kind of vibe that I want. So again, let's just hit the enter or return. Let that go ahead now and start to take a look at customizing the artwork and creating something for us. And there we go. After a few more minutes, you can see we now get some slightly different variations. We've got more in the running shoe kind of vein. Now you can see we've got four examples. And if we like one of these, the idea of it, we can kind of take it one step further. You can see we have these U1 through U4 and V1 through V4. All this basically means is these are upscaling. So in other words, it'll take the ideas we have in one, two, three, and four and upscale whichever one or ones we want. The one underneath will actually create variations of version one, two, three, or four. So in this example, I might say that I actually quite like the look of the first one. So we could say we want to do upscale that. And also while we're at it, let's go ahead and say we want to get a couple of variations on it. We'll click submit. And if you want to, you can go in and you can add extra things inside you. So let's say, for example, we want to put in paint splashes. Put some colors in. And again, let's go ahead and hit submit on there. And now that's going to create some variations, including the extra information that we've added into our Imagine prompt. And again, after a few more minutes, we now start to have some variations upon what we covered. You can see the first one shows us where we've added the extra colors and the paint splashes and so on. So if you have brand colors, this is a good way of introducing those into the overall design that's being created using Midjourney. If you like one of those, we can go ahead and we can upscale that. 
or we can take a look at the one we chose to upscale. When we click on it, you can see that now gives us the upscaled version. We can click on Open Original and we'll see the full size version of that in all of its graphical glory. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and save any of the images that I want to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply just grab the image and we're going to drop that into my Eagle account. So we're going to choose my folder and we're going to drop this into Mid Journey Images. Okay, so now we have a couple of AI generated images. You can see this one I've sort of set up and was working with previously and the one we've just created. So that's how we'd start going about creating these kinds of images. Next up, we want to start creating a design and we want some content to put into it. So first of all, let's go over into Figma and let's take a look at actually using some of these images. Let's create a new design inside Figma. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this to be a desktop. 40 and 40 is perfectly fine for now. Obviously, we need to get the images inside here. For ease, I'm just going to simply drag the image out of Eagle. We'll drop that into our design. There's our starting point. Let's go ahead and resize this a little. This is a bit too big at the moment. That looks pretty cool. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can set a background. We want to make sure that everything is in keeping with this, the same kind of color scheme and so on. So what we're going to do is going to just select the rectangle shape. We'll drag a rectangle into our design and resize it making sure it's the same size as our hero image, and we'll just drop that underneath. Okay, so you can see there's a difference in color, so all we need to do is make sure we've got our rectangle selected, choose the fill color, use the eyedropper, and we can just sample the color from the image we have created, and there you go. We now have our basic hero image set up at the top. If you need to, we can double click on this, and we can choose to crop this, just to get rid of any excess that we might not need. The same kind of thing goes for any space underneath and so on. And because you've got the background of our kind of block here set the same color, everything is going to tie in nicely. So we can position that we want. Once I have me, click to close out of it. And we've now got our kind of hero image in there. But obviously, we need to have some kind of real interesting call to action information and a strap line and so on. So how can we use AI to get that? Well, we're going to use chat GPT because that's pretty amazing. Now, ChatGPT is kind of taking the internet by storm right now. And the beautiful thing about this is it's incredibly good and it's also free. So go ahead and sign up for an account, log in, do all the kinds of things you need to do. Let's go ahead now and ask it to write out what we want. So let's start off with create a hero section. So we want this to kind of create that call to action, the hero section and so on. And as you can see, it's done just that. Step up your game with the new Nike sneakers. Call to action, shop now and get ready to dominate the courts. If that has no relevance at all, one of the nice things about ChatGPT is this is a conversational AI based tool. So we can just tell it to do things we want. So we can just say, rewrite the hero title. Okay, so you can see it comes up with another variation. And let's just say we want to come up with even more. We can just say, Right, five variations. So now we're going to get five different variations on that theme for our hero section. You can kind of see where this goes. We can have a conversation with this and we can refine what it actually gives us. And again, we can ask for more variations or we can be more specific. So for example, we want to have a maximum of six words. Now it isn't always perfect, but probably eight times out of 10, it'll come back with a good example of what we're asking for. So we can see, we can go through it and we can choose what we want. So let's just say we like this, power through your runs with Nike. Let's just copy that from there. We can now head back over into Figma and we can go ahead, we can choose the type tool, we can just click inside, we'll drop in our new hero section title, we'll change the typography and size and so on. Let's tighten the spacing up a little bit. There we go. Now we can go back into ChatGPT and you can see we've got our call to action. So shop now and get ready to dominate the courts. Let's just ask it to rewrite or give us variations. And one of the nice things about ChatGPT is that when you're in a conversation, it kind of keeps track of what you're talking about, the tone of voice you may ask and things like that. So the entire conversation has a kind of common thread going through it, which is incredibly useful if you ask it to do it in a fun, lighthearted way. All of the kind of responses are going to keep with that tone of voice. One of the things I really like about it. But as you can see, now we've got more. So get ready to crush your workouts with Nike. Upgrade your footwear game today. So let's just say we want to create more variations. But we want to focus more on running and jogging as opposed to being quite generic. And there we go. You can see we've now got a range of different variations. I like this last one. So we're going to grab that from there. Head back over into Figma. We'll simply go ahead. We'll just duplicate this. So we don't worry about too much about fonts and so on. We can just change this, make it a little bit smaller. And we'll just go ahead and put our text inside there, just the line space. 
maybe go a little larger. There we go. So we're kind of getting somewhere now. We've got something that's a bit more in keeping with the actual topic that we're talking about. So the final thing we're going to do is go ahead and we'll just do a call to action button. So let's just create a standard rectangle. We'll adjust the size of this a little bit to make a button. We'll round those corners off. And what we're going to do is we want to grab one of the colors from here to make sure that it kind of retains that continuity of design. Now we could go with this teal color or this orange color, whatever we want. So let's just test it out. Let's go to the fill. Let's grab the eyedropper tool and let's start off with one of these more sort of vibrant oranges. How does that look? That actually looks pretty good. But let's try the teal anyway. Let's go ahead and select this and find one of those colors. Actually, I quite like the look of that. So once we've done that, we can now go ahead and drop in the text that we want to use. So again, let's just simply copy this. Drop it down there, adjust the actual position of this, and we'll just change this to shop now. Let's just quickly resize. Let's change our alignment to centered, and let's just fine tune that, and we'll make it just a little bit bigger. So a call to action stands out. And maybe even a little heavier. There we go, looks pretty good. Okay, let's just make sure that everything is nice and neatly aligned. Let's group the button together. Well, let's go ahead and select all of these and we can just make sure that everything is lined to the left and we're going to come into a space and just ask you to tidy up and there we go so that now tidies everything up if you want to we can still refine this to get what we want so now we've created our kind of hero section now let's go ahead and just create some kind of logo or branding so for this we can come over to brand mark now this is less about the sort of ai this is more sort of just generating things but you could kind of say it's semi ai Let's go into the options for creating my logo. Now what we're going to do is going to give this a name first of all. I'm going to call this Sneakerheads. Just well because. Go to the next section and you can see this allows us to give it some brand kind of keywords, words we want to use to encapsulate what it looks like. Again, let's click to the next section. We can choose some basic color styles. Now you can change all of this once you're inside the brand mark kind of editor. So don't worry too much about it. Let's go for something like simple and click next. This is now going to go ahead and create some starting point logos for us, and we can then start to refine these to get what we want. So as you can see, once we've kind of set everything up, you can go through and you can find out what actually works for you. Now you see they're using icons in a lot of these. You can change every single aspect. There's the colors, the icons, the typography, the spacing, all those things. So use this as a kind of starting point to get an idea to spark the inspiration. Now I quite like the look of the typography here, so I can select this. And I can scroll down, I can see some examples of what this would look like across various different things, including the brand colors and so on. Let's close that down though. And let's come in to choose edit. Once we're inside here, we can edit the name, the slogan, the icon, the background, and the layout. So if we wanted to change the text, we want to change the wording, anything like that, we can do that inside here. We can choose different fonts. You can also come in and you can filter these down to modern, classic, playful, and so on until you find something you really like. I quite like the look of what we've already got, so I'm going to stick with that. So close that down. If you want to add a slogan in, you could add that in. So for example, the ultimate running shoe collection. And then if I want to, I can adjust the font size, letter spacing, you kind of line space as well. If you want to tighten things up, you could do that. So for example, that actually looks pretty cool. I could come into the icons. I can edit the color of this if I want to, choose from you know, any brand colors I may have or just choose something that I think looks pretty cool. If I want, I can browse the icons and I can come up and again, we've got letter, simple, modern and illustration. So let's come to illustration, for example, and let's just try sneakers. That might be a little bit too Americanized, might not pick anything up. Oh, actually, it does. So you can see you've got these hand-drawn illustrations of different kind of sneakers, trainers, daps, whatever you want to kind of call them. So you can find something you think actually looks pretty cool, like this one, for example. Select it, update it now, adds it into our design. For this example, though, I'm kind of happy not to have an icon. So we can say remove the icon and just have the text. If we jump over to background, you can see we can choose to have no background at all. We can choose containers. So if you want to have different containers to place this inside, you could do that. Looks a bit naff in this example, but you know, you can do it if you wanted to. We'll just remove that, set that to none, and keep with sneaker heads. And if you go into layout, you can adjust the layout of this. So if you're using icons, for example, you can choose the position of the icon, but obviously we're not using that. So once you've done that, what you can do is you can hop back over into your Figma, Select your background rectangle, select your color from there, 
So we just copy that color over. We'll relock this so we don't move things around. Come back into your brand mark logo. Go back into the background section and you can come into the background color. We can paste that inside there. Click on save. And that now applies that background. Now, first of all, before you go any further, I do not advocate you just basically steal the logos from here. If you choose a logo and your customer, your client goes, I like the look of that, then pay for it. It's not expensive. If you just want the simple logo, it's something like $15. If you want the scalable with SVG and all those kinds of things, it's like 60 bucks. It's nothing expensive. You can factor that into the overall pricing working with the client. But this gives you a starting point. So now what I can do is I can just grab this from the screen. You can see now that's allowed me to sort of save that. So I'll save that to the desktop for me, or I can go ahead and I can save this where I want. And now what we can do is we can pull this into our Figma design to start to create a more fully featured design with our logo and branding. So let's go and do that. Let's add an image in. We'll grab our Sneakerheads logo. And we'll position that into our design. There's one thing I found when you do it this way, because obviously you are just screen grabbing. There is a, a little variation in the color, but it's not enough to worry about to kind of put things off. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can just drop in some navigation over on the right hand side. And our design is pretty much done. Let's resize this a little bit. Let's set that to be 16. And we'll set this to be semi bold so it stands out a little bit. And then what we can do is we can roughly position this where we want. Center it up kind of thing with the logo. And we can duplicate that a couple of times by just simply holding the shift or alt key down on PC. And then we can just change these. So we say shop now, store locator and contact. Let's just select those. And let's just use the option at the top to tidy up. And there's our hero section all pretty much done other than the design side of things using AI tools. Now this is just scratching the surface of what you could achieve by using these tools for inspiration. Now, like I say, at the top of the video, I don't recommend you do this to be, this is the one and done kind of thing, but this is a really solid starting point to allow you to get creative using images that don't currently exist, AI to create those. If you have a lack of inspiration or you want to create something that's in keeping with the audience or the client that you're going to be working with, this is much better than you using that boring Laura Ipsum content. This is something specific and they can kind of get a feel for exactly what you're doing. But I've just really shown you just some of the basics of what you can do with these tools. Again, if you'd like more detailed content on any of the tools that I've used from Figma right the way through to Mid Journey and everything in between, let me know in the comments section down below. But I'm going to pass the question over to you. What do you think of AI using it as a designer system in the same way that we've kind of covered in this video? I would love to know. Let me know. Drop the comments down in the comment section below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.